is the fact that he knew I was going camping. But whilst I was on my camping trip, even if I just posted up a picture of my camping trip, he's trolling all over the pictures. And it's what the, he's doing at that time, in my view, is that no matter how much he was trying to pursue to form a relationship with me, he was then trying to make it publicly aware, his association with me, to everybody else. Yeah, by tagging me into things, because I don't know everybody, I don't get involved with everything, um, I'm very private, I keep it a limited amount of people on my Facebook. I'm not... I like to... The no, the... I said he was creating the persona around him that he was a very influential man and almost trophy is it like trophying you around or trophying around what he was doing like you know he's, he's using my investigation work and actually going back using that and saying it to other people as though it was his for example there was a man at the Royal Courts of Justice that attended on the 15th and the 22nd called Addy <coughs> and he's a lawyer that um, spoke on the video on the 22nd that said that he gave up his work in being a barrister or a lawyer because of the corruption and the access to the judicial system um, and Julian was using this man Addy who I've never been able to see ever again since the 15th of June but he was using this man Addy and the the history of my knowledge of law by researching up what I know and the um, pursuant of council tax mm -hmm. and being able to unlock what's been going on with the council tax, unlock what's been going on with Hertfordshire, he was then using my knowledge and my research that I, he was getting me to send it over to him and then whoever he would then speak to, would then um, he would then pass it off as, it, as his own. For example, I was telling him about the Napoleonic Code with um, 1804 and how there is two different common laws. But on that subject there is where he tried to get me to conflict with Patrick because um, he was bad jacketing in my ear about Patrick, but then because I understood about the, the Napoleonic Code, it was like, well, why didn't that Patrick know about that one? And that's when I started to see the, the, the vision that he tried to come in when I had such high loyalty for Patrick and high respect because I understand exactly where Patrick is coming from, where many don't. And Patrick is common law. Many people are too much on the legalese side of it. Well, on that, I reckon it's about time we went across to Patrick, because I've been itching, my shit has been itching to get Patrick in on this. Hello? Hello? Hi, hi all. Do you want me to do something? That's not Patrick. Oh, hey, no. Pat, Irishman. I haven't heard any Irishman this evening. Oh, right, right. Uh, let me think. Right, so who the fuck's... He was on here. Um, but uh, I mean, if you could try giving him another call um, and bringing him back on board, uh, he might want his, he might want to start uh, do his stuff. Um, in the meantime, I'm, I know Stella's been itching to say something. So Stella, do you want to do you want to come in and say what you had to say? Yeah, because unfortunately, uh, we don't get broadband here. I'm in the middle of nowhere, so it's contract mobiles. Um, a couple of points that sort of might make it easier for anybody else that is sort of listening and stuff like that is obviously I have had years and years of experience and can spot people from a mile off when there couldn't be, there's no other word for it, a cunt basically. Um, and a couple of the ones that's obviously, they show similar traits with, with what Katie's mentioned and a few of the others that I've spoke to because they do do the rounds. It's not obviously just Julian, it, they, there'll be more and they've been before and they'll come again. Um, and one of the first ones of sort of how how to easily spot someone like that is the sort of mainly to do with care proceedings, but also it, you could ream it into anything really if you've got organisations, if you've got the campaign, and if you've got the activism or anything like that. It's those that have said they've done this, they've done that, they've done the other, yet can't name a single thing that they've actually done or prove it in any way. And if you mention to somebody, they don't actually know the person. That's one of the main sort of triggers, so to speak, that grasps my attention when you do hear about these people. Um, mainly to do with the care proceedings as well is another one, uh, working on sort of working on this many cases or it'd go for activism as well if they say, oh, we're doing this, this and this. And yet they appear to be constantly online and constantly free to talk and sort of every single post sometimes when it's on Facebook is readily he's commented or she's commented and stuff like that. And you normally pick up if you if you're that busy, you're not gonna have time to do anything. Um 
not only that, but you've also got the, um, if you're bombarded with calls and texts and inboxes and the constantly demanding tension, what they're mainly doing is actually draining your resources and distracting you from what you're, what you should should essentially be having have it as your main focus so your primary attention is distracted by that person what you've got to bear in mind is anything more and that can do with any single person anything more than three phone calls or three messages is by law harassment so if somebody else this person who apparently is supposed to be your friend is constantly doing more than three phone calls you've got to see it as clear as what it is and that is harassment um, the other thing is obviously the gut instinct. If you've got a dodgy feeling about somebody, nine times out of ten, that dodgy feeling is going to be right. And always stick with your gut instinct. Anybody that's trying to isolate you away from any, sort of any help or support you've got should be stepped away from immediately. Because whether you're campaigning or whether you're going through hell with care proceedings or anything like that, you need every single bit of support around you. And then it's a typical divide and contact, divide and conquer. So when they're trying to drag you away from other people or anybody that's going to help you out in a crisis, step away from them because they're not worthy to be talking to and you just don't want to be anywhere near them. Anybody that's saying that they're wanting money for this or money for that or they're asking, oh, can you, can you pay me to do sort of come here or can you pay the travel costs to do that and stuff like that, that's another one that you have to look out for because if somebody's wanting to help you why would they be asking for money off you to do it they're either there for you or they're there for an ulterior motive and obviously lastly you've got the if they basically if they talk the talk but they can't walk the walk you need to be walking away from them because they're not going to be helping you in any way shape or form and um, obviously when you're in a situation and as obviously julian's targeting vulnerable parents and vulnerable people um, that happen to be either survivors of child abuse or going through care proceedings or have problems with councils, the local authorities and basically organisations that are world, worldwide and completely controlling is anybody, because I know Julian has said this to Katie and I don't think she's mentioned it yet, which is one of the ones that shocked me. Um, he actually said that he could get her kids home or could make sure that the, the child could be at home. Any single person, if they meant if you're going through care proceedings, any single person who says, I can ensure 100% your child would stay at home or that they won't get removed is absolute bullshit. It's just false hope. There is not a single person in this country, whether it be judge, solicitor, mitigation advisor or person in the groups, is going to promise you that it's just rubbish, absolute rubbish. So you need to run from them people because they're only going to let you down throughout. Um, the other one that's a decent safeguard is accept every single bit of advice and you can obviously put tailor this to the activism and the campaign and stuff like that. You need to be accepting every single bit of advice from everyone, but you always make sure that you make the final decision yourself. You've got to follow your gut instinct. It's your case, your kids, your life, your commitments, your desire and your goals of what you want to highlight or whatever. So you need to make sure you make the final decision, but never, ever knock anybody back that's going to be giving you help because you never know whether it, the person that's walking down the street who happens to say, oh, with this and that, that's going to save your case or do something magical for you. And that's why you should always accept information. Even if you're e-wigging on conversations on the train and stuff like that, you never know what you can pick up, which will help you. Um, anybody that's drawn your attention away from what your what your goals are, get rid of them straight away because they're, just, they're not going to do anything but create negative um, always make sure that you, any advice that you do get given that you research yourself because Google is your best friend believe it or not and it has the answer as long as you ask the right questions or if you've got a any problem, you can guarantee that it's going to be on Google, the answer or some way of getting around it, whether that's a loophole or whether it's just a bit of advice, even down to bloody fix and baths, you can get it off Google. So legal stuff, you can get it off Google. Um, the other one is if you are going through the proceedings and stuff like that, is record absolutely everything. Make sure that you get a diary, record every meeting, every phone call, every conversation, letters, everything. Put it all in the same book, even if it's just a little journal with times and dates and stuff like that. Because it's better if you can actually show the evidence 
and be able if somebody says oh way this i've never spoken to you on such and such if you've got a book where you can do, flip a page and go we're funny because on this date at this time at that on this phone number you rang me and said this this and this it's very hard to deny it so it just backs up added to which if you are in care proceedings it, you believed more if you can say to a judge, we actually, he's the book and I've kept track of absolutely everything. You read through that and that'll tell you everything. And then it's not easily ripped out and it's just not one piece of information on one page and then you could rip it out or anything like that. It's all tracked, so you can't change or alter it. So you've got a record of everything that's kept, which goes in your favour, believe it or not, as daft as it sounds. Um, that's really, you know, that's really, I mean... I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're on, Stella, because I know Katie can hear all of this, and I know she's taking it in. I've never met such an uh, astute young woman who's gone through so much. And I could be speaking about both of you, you know, with, with that. But I do know that Ajax wants to jump in. Um, I, I think Tom well, or Ajax I've has got... got I've got Patrick in now, actually. I've got Patrick in the call. He wasn't showing up online. Uh, he was showing up away on Skype, so I forgot to add him. So my apologies, but I think he's in the call now. Well, I'm going to shoot, so I'll say bye and thank you for having me on. Thank you, Stella. Stella, I'll contact you over feed. Bye, Stella. Stella. Thank you. See you later, please. Bye. All right. Thank you very much. Patrick, are you there? 